So a couple of months ago, this came through my door. It's a bell cancer screening kit, and it gave me the idea to make this video. Where I live, the National Health Service sends this free kit to everyone between the ages of 51 and 74, because bell cancer is the fourth most common cancer in the UK, and is much more common in this age group. The early detection possible with this kit saves lives, so as I'm approaching 55, it makes sense for me to take advantage of this free test. But putting aside government recommended age related testing, what about all the other tests that are available to purchase? There are so many home health tests that you can purchase online. And these amazing tests can detect early signs of kidney cancer, bladder cancer, prostate cancer, bowel cancer, and high blood sugar. You can even measure your cortisol levels. Though, if you suffer from anxiety, you have probably guessed that your cortisol levels are high most of the time anyway. But high cortisol is usually the effect of anxiety, not the cause. But with all these tests that can keep us safe, there is no need to worry about your health anymore. This should end the epidemic of health anxiety that we have in the Western world, right? Well, sadly not. In fact, this easy availability of home medical tests may actually be contributing to the health anxiety epidemic. So in this video I'm going to talk about why home testing kits can be bad for your anxiety, and if there are occasions where it does make sense to use these kits, and how a tool used in CBT can help you make that decision. So let's look at an example. Larry, who is 28, suffers from anxiety. The anxiety causes him lots of physical symptoms. For instance, the anxiety often upsets his bowels. So he starts googling his bowel symptoms and starts reading stuff about bowel cancer. Soon the algorithm detects his interest in bowel cancer and tries to sell him a bowel cancer screening kit, similar to the one I received. Algorithms are something that people with anxiety really need to be aware of. If you are googling or watching YouTube videos about symptoms or illnesses, the big platforms share information about your interests, which means not only will you see more on that topic on the same platform, but you may also see adverts on other platforms. So your anxiety gets fueled from multiple platforms. And it's very tempting to succumb to the advertising to try to relieve the anxiety. If you want to see for real how the YouTube algorithm can feed your anxiety, watch the video above in which I did an experiment where I tried to give myself anxiety by watching YouTube videos about some genuine physical symptoms that I had. The results were very interesting. Anyway, back to Larry's story. After seeing multiple adverts for bowel cancer screening kits, Larry succumbs and orders one. A few days later, he receives it, does the test and sends it off for analysis. The anxiety during the weeks waiting for the results is crippling, but finally he receives the results. It's negative. What a relief. The crippling anxiety immediately lifts. But not for long. Now he's thinking, what if it's not my bell, but my kidneys that are the problem? A few hours of Googling later, and Google has sold him a urine test that can detect kidney problems, bladder cancer, and even prostate cancer. He is back to waiting for the results and the crippling anxiety. Once again, the results are negative, but he keeps ordering more and more tests, and even starts ordering tests that he has already done, just in case the results were wrong. And the problem with this is that this behaviour is causing the anxiety part of his brain to think that he is generally in danger of dying from some illness. So it sends more thoughts about illnesses, and these thoughts cause more anxiety, which causes more physical symptoms like his upset bowels. So, Larry should probably stop doing all of these tests and speak to a doctor or a counsellor about his anxiety. So, should everyone avoid these tests? Well, that is a decision that you'll have to make for yourself. But CBT can help you. CBT teaches you to challenge your thoughts and look for evidence for your thought being valid and evidence against your thought being valid. So, let's have a look at Larry's thought that he has bowel cancer. The evidence for was that he does go to toilet a lot and sometimes gets stomach cramps. The evidence against is that the doctor has told him many times that it's anxiety that's upset in his stomach. Also, although there is an increase in younger people getting bowel cancer, it is still fairly rare at Larry's age, as shown by these figures from Cancer Research UK. He also doesn't have many of the symptoms associated with bowel cancer, like blood in the stool or weight loss. And the fact that the symptoms he has had have been the same for five years also suggests it's not getting any worse. When you have gathered all the evidence for, and evidence against, CBT teaches you to come up with a balanced statement that acknowledges the evidence from both sides. And a useful phrase to start the sentence with is, even though. So Larry's statement would go something like this. Even though 
I'm going to the toilet a lot and getting some stomach cramps. I've had these symptoms for years and the doctor has told me it's caused by anxiety. And bell cancer is rare at my age and I don't have weight loss or blood in my stool. If Larry had done this exercise, he probably would not have ordered the test. Now let's look at Mary. Mary is 70 years old. She keeps getting the thought that she has bladder cancer. So let's look at the evidence for and against. Mary has recently been urinating a lot, but she knows anxiety can cause this also. Although it never has before, despite having anxiety all her life. She also noticed a change of colour in her urine, which she thinks may have been blood. Bladder cancer risk is higher over 55, with the average age of diagnosis 73, which is very close to Mary's age. Now to the balanced statement. Because this time the evidence for is stronger than the evidence against, the order is reversed. So it goes something like this. Even though anxiety can make me urinate more, it never has before. And I have blood in my urine, and the risk is much higher at my age. So, should Mary order a urine testing kit? Well, Mary's priority should be to go and see a doctor. If, like where I live, it can take five weeks to see a doctor and she can get the home testing results while she's waiting, then it may be worthwhile getting a home testing kit. That way, she may have confirmation that there is blood in her urine, which will be useful information for the doctor. But if she can see a doctor immediately, then the doctor is likely to do the same test anyway. So if you suffer anxiety, before you start spending money on these home kits, challenge your thoughts first. Ask yourself questions like this. How common is this illness in my age group? Is there a family history of this illness? Are these new symptoms or have I had these symptoms before? What has the doctor said about these symptoms? Could there be other less serious explanations for these symptoms? Could these symptoms be caused by anxiety? The video linked above can help you with that. All these questions will activate the frontal lobe of your brain, which is the part that deals with logic and reasoning. The anxiety and the catastrophic thoughts come from the amygdala. Despite being only the size of a peanut, the powerful amygdala is often able to overrule the much larger frontal lobe. So despite all the evidence against the catastrophic thoughts that the amygdala is sending you, you might still spend unnecessary money on some home testing kit or other. This is because all the symptom checking and reassurance seeking that you have been doing has revved up the amygdala into fight or flight mode. And unfortunately, when you are in fight or flight mode, the logical frontal lobe doesn't get much of a say in what happens next. Your brain is prioritizing the bit that ensures your survival. So before you do the thought challenging exercise, you need to switch the amygdala off, or at least turn it down, so your logical frontal lobe can calmly assess if the risk is real or not. And if you can turn down the amygdala, you may find that the symptoms that you are worried about actually reduce. But how do you turn down the amygdala? How do you get out of fight or flight mode? Well, there are many ways, and I explain five of them in this video here. Take care now.